Praise God. Well, today is Healing Sunday. And uh, I love preaching on healing. Glory to God. Because th that's one of the things that the enemy will attack us in. And because we live in a natural world, we live in natural bodies. We don't have our glorified bodies yet. I'm looking forward to that day when we get glorified bodies and it's going to be incorruptible. But our bodies are corruptible. Have you figured that out yet? That's why we got to learn to navigate this life in faith and, and take hold of the promises of God. Amen? Amen? And so today the title of my sermon is Healing Bible Truths. Amen. Healing Bible Truths. Because, uh, because the Bible gives us truths about healing. And, and unfortunately, there's many churches that will teach untruths about healing. And, uh, but today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you some truths about healing. And we got ten truths today. And, and the first truth, hopefully we'll get through the whole message. The first truth is, it is God's will to heal all and not just some. I love that. It's God's will. It's, it is God's will to heal all and not just some. Because sometimes what we do is we see people, maybe in the body of Christ, maybe some prominent minister that dies of a disease they were prayed for, and, they, and then we relegate their not getting healed as maybe it was God's will for them not to be healed. I'm going to say this that, that uh, the problem doesn't rely on God's side. Amen. See, the problem isn't with the transmitter. A lot of times the problem is, is with the receiver. Can I, get a, can I get a witness in the house today? God's power is always resident to heal, but we have to learn to take a hold of it. We have to learn to receive the healing power of God. So God doesn't have a problem dis, you know, dispersing his power, but sometimes we have a problem receiving it. And so we got to get a revelation that, that the truth is that it's God's will to heal all and not so, just some. And, and I go to this scripture most, uh, most often because it's a great scripture. And sometimes people, even... Christians can base their praying on this scripture, and I'm going to explain that in a moment. And in Luke 5, 12 through 13, it says, And it happened when he was in a certain city talking about Jesus, that behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus. And he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then he put out his hand, talking about Jesus, and Jesus touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed, and immediately the leprosy left him. This is amazing to me, that, that, that this man, he, he, he knew that Jesus had the power to heal, but he, he wasn't too sure if Jesus was willing to heal. And sometimes we read this and we kind of add this into our prayers and we sometimes pray like, Lord, heal me if it be your will. And because maybe it's not your will for me to be healed. Well, if it wasn't God's will for you to be healed, then you shouldn't go to a doctor. <laughs> you shouldn't be trying to get fixed. Because if it's God's will for you to be sick, then let his will be full throttle in your life. But it's not God's will for you to be sick. It's not God's will for you to have an infirmity. It's not God's will. Some people are more focused on Job's boils, amen, than Jesus' stripes. Some people like to talk about Job's boils more than they like to talk about Jesus' stripes. But I'd rather talk about Jesus' stripes than Job's boils. And by the way, Job's boils went away. <laughs> Job was healed. He, his entire body was healed. He got totally restored. So he was, there, was, there was a process in Job's life 
that where, where he was being attacked by the enemy, but, you know, he came out of it when he came out of bitterness, when he prayed for his friends, when he, when he started walking in some love. If you walk in some love, you'll come out of some sickness. Amen. I'm not going to charge for that this one today. That wasn't in my notes. Amen. And if you, if you want to walk in health and healing, you've got to get a revelation with, and you've got to have no shadow uh, of, of disbelief that God doesn't want you healed. Like sometimes we hear God is putting us through a process and he's, and he's trying to purify us through our sickness. You know, I don't believe that. You know, Jesus said in this life, he didn't say you will have sickness. In this life, you will have infirmities. He said, in this life, you have trials or tribulations or persecutions. That's what we deal with in this life. We, that's what Jesus promised that we might have if we live a righteous life, some persecution. But, but he didn't say that we're going to have sickness to persecute us. Can I get a witness in the house today? And so I love this, and, and, so, and some, some people, they, they, they get this, if it be thy will. If, if you ever put if in your prayer, that's always a badge of doubt. If you, all, if you put if, if, God. No, no, all of God's promises, the Bible says, are yes and amen. amen. Hallelujah. So if you can find it in the Bible, and you can find a promise on that, you can stand on that promise as being yours. Can I get a witness in the house today? Amen. Let's look at John 9, because uh, verse 1 through 7, this is really a, a pretty good account. It says, now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sin, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. So they, so they were questioning rather, and they thought at that time, maybe you could sin in a womb, which it's, I don't know how they could think that way. And uh, oh, maybe their parents' sin brought this sickness. And Jesus said, ne neither their sin. The, the sin doesn't have anything to do with it. But, but Jesus said, so that the glory of God can be revealed in this man. And so I'm going to say this. The enemy will try to do some things to, to our kids, to our family, uh, try to inflict us with things. But, but really, it's, if we respond to it the right way, God's glory will come out of it. Now, now, I'm going to say this. You do not glorify God in your sickness. Like, you don't say, I'm glorifying God with this sickness. God's put this sickness on me for me to glorify God. No, no, then you would be saying that what Jesus did was a waste. Jesus taking stripes on his body was a waste, and it wasn't for you. Amen. But Jesus taking stripes on his body was for you. Why did Jesus come? Why, why did he come? Well, he come to, to save, seek and save the lost. That word save it, it is not just having eternal life with Father, and that's the main part of it, but save means to heal and deliver and to set free. Amen. So he came to heal, deliver, and to set free. In other words, he came to undo the works of the evil one. In 1 John 3, 8, it says, The one who does, uh, NIV, the one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. And this is the second part. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. So when you ever see anybody afflicted or, or you see somebody uh, with some disease, or it's not God's work. It's the devil's work. You got to get a revelation of that. You know, mankind, you know, a lot of times we get this idea and we know that God is all powerful and, and we get this idea of, and sometimes we get, sometimes preachers preach the sovereignty of God. That means that God's in total control and whatever happens to us, God is in a sense uh, ordaining it. But that's not true. 
God's not ordaining everything that happens in our lives. Sometimes we reap what we sow. Amen. Sometimes what we, we get ourselves in our own trouble. It's not God pushing every button and pulling every lever to make everything work. Amen. No, it's even John Wesley and said it seems as if God cannot do anything unless somebody prays first. In other words, we got to get God involved in our circumstances and our situations. And, and you just can't be an idle Christian. You can't be a Christian. If you are an idle Christian, that means that you're not pushing forward in the things of God by staying in the Word, staying prayed up, you know, being fired up for God. Just, just being inactive can cause the enemy to overtake you. See, it's, it's hard for, for you it, when, on target practices. It's easy to, to, to hit a target that's, that's standing still. It's harder to, to hit a target that's moving. That's why I say to you guys in faith, you've got to keep moving in faith. Amen. Glory to God. Number two, uh, so number one, it's God's will to heal all, not just some. And you can even look at this through all the accounts that Jesus healed people. And there's not one time in the scriptures where Jesus said it wasn't God's will to heal. God went about doing good and healing all. Amen. Uh, truth number two, sickness and disease comes from the devil. Some people believe, well, you know, it, it, everything comes from God. No, it doesn't. Uh, only the Bible says all good gifts comes from the Father of light above. And is sickness a good gift? Well, some people believe, well, it's a good gift because it drew me closer to God. Well, it, it can, you know, the Bible, it, it can bring humility in your life if, if you respond to it the right way and you humble yourself. But, but, but sometimes it makes you even more angry. And sometimes people get angry towards God if they think God is doing it to them. Amen. Oh, you hear what I'm saying today? Sometimes it, it, it's, it's the opposite response. It doesn't bring you into humility. It brings you into anger. If you believe that God's doing it. But no, no, we have an enemy. Look at your name and say, you have an enemy. And it's the devil. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. The devil, I, I hate to say it to you today, but the devil's after you. He's trying to shut you down. Amen. He's trying to do everything he can to slow you from walking out that good and perfect will of the Father. Do you believe that today? Amen. So in John 10.10, 10, Jesus said it's the thief that, does not, uh, that, that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But, but I come, Jesus said, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. One of my favorite scriptures, because I really believe that God wants us walking this abundant life. In other words, there's a word that's called shalom. That means nothing missing, nothing broken. That means total wholeness. And God wants us walking in total wholeness. Amen. Can I get a witness today? He doesn't want anything hindering us. He doesn't want anything slowing us down. Glory to God. And so we see this. It's the devil that does this. And then I like what, what Peter said uh, to Cornelius' household when he was witnessing to them about who Jesus was. And he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And how Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Notice that? Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed. See, see, see Peter understood the oppression comes from the devil. It doesn't come from God. Amen. Can I get a witness today? And so, and so, and so Jesus was empowered to, to reverse the curse. Glory to God. Let's look at Luke 13. This is a really great account here. How we can see how the enemy works against us and how the devil can afflict our bodies. Do you know the devil can afflict your body? 
Amen. The, the devil can come uh, against you. But it says here, now, now in Luke 13, Luke 13, 10 through 16, the New King James Version, it says, Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years, was bent over, and could in no way raise herself up. Think about that. So what, what is the devil trying to do? The devil is trying to deform mankind. And, so, and so, so here, she was bent over for 18 years. That's a long time. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loose from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. That's powerful. See, I'm going to say this. See, she was in church that day. She was in the synagogue that day. And she, and she got her healing. I'm, I'm, can I put a plug in? It's important that you come out to church and you are already here. I'm preaching to the choir right now. This is all those watching online. But you don't know, glory to God. You don't know when your miracle could come about in a church service. You don't know that the power of God... Uh, because it's different when you're in the church service. Yeah. Amen. There's less distractions when you're in the church service. There's, there's a, a, a tangible anointing in the church service. Yes, and when you're, under, when you're under that anointing, God can move. Gifts of the Spirit can operate. You can be set free. And this lady was being faithful, being her best. She wasn't using this infirmity as an excuse not to come to church. Oh, I'm preaching today. But she kept pressing in and, kept, and probably believing, God, I, thank you. I, I, I'm believing for my healing. She probably was believing for God's healing. And all of a sudden, Jesus showed up. And Jesus set her free. But the rulers of the synagogue answered with indignation. Because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, and he said to the crowd, and he said to the crowd, there, is, and they, and there are six days which men ought to work, therefore come be healed on them, and not on the Sabbath day. And so religion will always tell you that, that you shouldn't be healed in a certain way, or religion will always tell you that, 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 that it's not the right time, but but it's always the right time when you're in God. Amen. It's always the right time when you're in his presence. And so these religious people were upset because Jesus did a miracle on the Sabbath. And the Lord then answered him and said, hypocrite. I love the way Jesus talks. You hypocrite. I mean, out loud. He, he wasn't trying to win any popularity contest. He just said, hypocrite. And it does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox on the donkey, uh, ox or donkey from the stall, and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom, now underline this, whom Satan has bound. Think about this. Think of it for 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath. So we see here that really the Sabbath is a day of rest. I really believe this, and I got this revelation. I think it's appropriate for people to be set free on the Sabbath day. Amen. Because if you're dealing with affliction, you're dealing with disease, you're dealing with some problem in your body, the greatest day to be set free is on the Sabbath, glory to God. Because that's the day of rest. It's time to rest from your afflictions. Number three truth through faith and perseverance, you will receive your healing. Amen. Amen. I, I, you know, that's really, that's a scripture that's in Hebrews 6, 12. It says, through, pay, through faith and patience or perseverance, you shall receive. We see this account in Mark 10, 46 through 52. It says, now, it came to Jer now they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, talking about Jesus, and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 
Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. So we see here that this man was heard about Jesus, heard about his, obviously heard about that Jesus was healing people, and he started crying out mercy. And then some of the people around him told him to be quiet. In other words, a lot of times religion will tell you you're not good enough to receive healing. That you haven't done enough good things in God for God to do anything for you. But I'm going to say this, your healing is not predicated on the good things that you do. It's on the good things that God desires to do. It's not predicated on your good works. It's predicated on Jesus' good work. And so it, 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 it wasn't based on how good or bad this man was. It, it was based on this, Jesus calling him was his desire. See, he had a strong desire to be healed. Glory to God. And, and he, was, he persevered. And if you're going to get your heal, healing, you're going to have to persevere through some things. You're going to have to press through to get some things. Sometimes it's a fight. I was listening to this one minister uh, uh, last week, and uh, Catherine Kuhlman, and she walked in miracles, and, she, and, she, and miracles happened in her meetings, and, and she said, you just see me come out in the miracles, but you don't see what I do before I get here. Amen. And she said that the, the anointing is something that doesn't come cheap. Amen. The grace of God doesn't come cheap. In other words, there's a price to pray or a price to pay. Yes, amen. And, so, and, and so her hours of worshiping God and, and seeking God and fasting, you see it all out here when they get on the stage, but you don't see the crying and the weeping and the praying and the fasting in, in, in the areas. People don't see that. They only see the glory of God. And so I'm going to say this, if you're going to walk in the anointing of God, and this is free today, you're going to have to press in. You're going to have to push to get some things from God. And this man pushed to get some things from God. He persevered. And, and Jesus, uh, let's look at this. He says, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still, commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer. Rise. He is calling you. <laughs> And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? I love that. <laughs> Amen. Well, what is Jesus saying to us today in prayer? What do you want me to do for you? Well, how do you want me to move in your life? What can I do for you today? Amen. We should be asking God, what can we do for him today? But here, Jesus is saying, what do you want me to do? Your faith has, has, has got my attention. I'm going to say this. Your faith can get God's attention. Amen. And he says, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and he followed Jesus on the road. He was a smart man. You know what? When you get your healing, you better start following Jesus. You better not go back to your, li to your old life, go back into the old things. No, when you get a breakthrough from God, you need to be smart. You need to smarten up. Amen. And start following Jesus. Number four truth is God's word is more powerful than sickness. Can I get a witness now say, God's word is more powerful than sickness. Hebrews 4.12. And, uh, you know, I think about uh, the other scripture that says that the flower fades, the grass withers, but God's word will never go away. Glory to God. I'm paraphrasing it. It will never go away. In other words, God's word is eternal. And God even puts his word even above his name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And God always watches over his word to perform it. God is faithful to his word. Can I get a witness in the house today? 
And so here in Hebrews, it says for the, in 4.12, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So it's, he's saying here that the, that the word of God is more powerful. It's more powerful than an atom bomb. It's more powerful than the most powerful weapon mankind can, can devise, can make. It, 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 it has the power, and he likens it now. A two-edged sword was, was, was a weapon of that day, was, was one of the most powerful weapons that they had that day, a two-edged sword. And he said that, that it's, it's likened to that, the most powerful weapon you can think of. And he said that the Word of God can, can, can uh, divide soul and spirit, marrow and bone, and judge the very intents of our heart. So the Word of God is like a scalpel that can cut off any negative thing in our life. Amen. Can I get a witness in the house today? Amen. And, we, and what, if we got some problems, then, then you need to get some Word. You need to get that living word in you so, so it, can, it can change your circumstance and your situation. In Proverbs 4, 20 and 22, it says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in your midst of your heart. Notice this, that, that's what we need to do with the word of God. For uh, they are life to those who find them. And they are health to all their flesh. So, so he's saying this is what we need to be doing with the word of God. We need to attend to God's word. We need to incline our ears to his sayings. We, we need to let them not depart from our eyes. That's why I have them up here so you can read it. Uh, we, we need to keep them in the midst of our heart. Why? For they are life to those who find them. Life. And they are health to all your flesh. One translation says that the word of God is medicine to your body. Amen. Amen. So, so if, you're, if you're dealing with an affliction, if you're dealing with something, you just need to get some word in you. Get some promises of God's word. And God will make sure that word uh, is medicine that will heal your body. I love what it says in Psalms 107. But I'm going to say this. Even if you have some sin in your life, you can't keep the grace from coming into your life. Can I get a witness in the house today? Because where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. So I'm going to say this. Don't be focused on your sin. Focus on the sun. Oh, I'm preaching today. Oh, my Lord Jesus. I'm getting excited. Don't focus on your sickness. Focus on the sun. See, the devil wants us to focus on the sickness, focus on the sin. But if we focus on the Son, Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. Jesus is the Word made flesh. And in John 1, and, and, and I'm telling you, that Word will, will, will heal our flesh. I love this in Psalms 107, verse 20. The Israelites messed up. And they were doing some wrong things. And they ended up in the wrong territory. And they ended up getting, their bodies got afflicted. And the Bible said that they cried out to the Lord. Amen. And in Psalms 107 verse 20, uh, the Lord did this. He sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destructions. What, what, what is God waiting for us to do? Cry out to him. What is God waiting for us to do? He's waiting for us to seek Him with a whole heart. And when we seek Him, and when we, the Bible says, if you draw near to God, He will draw near to you. Amen. Yes. Amen. You can be as close to God as you want to be. Yes. You, you, so I, I believe there's some Catherine Koopmans being raised up in Exceed Life Church. Yes. I believe there's some Billy Grahams being raised up in Exceed Life Church. Amen. Somebody say, that's me. That's me. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I believe that God wants to do something amazing in your life. And, and you've got to believe that. Amen. Is God a respecter of people? No. But he is a respecter of faith. 
Amen. And faith, how do you get it? It comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. you got to keep hearing it. Why? Because the devil doesn't give up. And the devil keeps whispering in your ear, you're not going to make it. The devil keeps whispering in your ear, you're going to stay sick. The devil's going to whisper in your ear, you're never going to get healed. The, the devil keeps whispering in your ear, oh, this is God's will for you to have this sickness. No, you've got to shut him down. Amen. Amen. The devil's constantly working against us. But God is constantly working for us. Do you believe that today? Amen. Number five. A faith-filled truth, faith-filled words has the ability to demolish sickness. Faith-filled words has the ability to demolish sickness. What do I mean by that? There's power in your words. There's power in what you say. There's, there's, there's power in, 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 you know, the Bible says in, in Proverbs, it says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You're going to eat the fruit of your words. So what, what I'm saying to you this morning, you're going to have to speak some life-giving words out of your mouth. You, you need to stop talking uh, to God how big your problem is and start talking to your problem how big your God is. Oh, you hear what I'm saying today? And Jesus, you know... Jesus spoke to things. He spoke to dead people when they were raised up. He spoke to storms and they were calm. Jesus spoke to things. And you're going to have to learn to be like your elder brother Jesus. You're going to have to learn to speak to some things. You're going to have to learn to... You can't, listen, listen. Confessing what you already have won't change anything. If you confess, well, I'm dealing with this. Well, you're going to keep dealing with it. But you're going to have to start confessing something different, glory to God. See, Jesus in Mark 11, 12, and 14, I'm not going to read this account, but he came up to a fig tree that wasn't producing anything. It, it, it had leaves on it. It was a hypocrite tree. It appeared that it had figs. And when Jesus came up to it, no figs. And so Jesus cursed that tree. He spoke to it. He said, no man shall eat fruit of you from this point on. And, and, and that tree, the next day, it was withered. It was withered up. Jesus' words affected that tree. And your words will affect anything you speak to it. It will even affect if you're dealing with a disease, you speak to that disease, and that disease has to obey your words. Can I get a witness in the house today? Jesus talks to us about speaking to the mountain and, 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 and Jesus says, you know, uh, and because Peter got excited about the tree withering and then Jesus says in Mark, he says, have faith in God. So you got to have some faith in God. Have faith that God has the power to deliver and set free. Have faith in God. And he says, he says surely, uh, uh, I say to you, Whoever says to the mountain. Now, I love this, that Jesus didn't qualify that to, to any person. He didn't say, uh, if my disciples would just say it to the mountain. He just said, whoever says to the mountain. In, in other words, he's saying that because you're a human being, you're born on this earth, you have some natural authority. And your authority is derived by the words that you speak. Mm. I'm preaching today. Your authority is derived by the words that you speak. And if you say that you're defeated, you are defeated. If you say that you're victorious, you are victorious. If you say, I can't win, you won't be able to win. Doubt will come up and swallow you alive. But if you say that I have the victory, then you'll be standing on the mountaintop. And so Jesus said, whoever speaks to the mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe those things he says will be done. He will have whatsoever he says. So, so, so basically, bottom line is, you get what you say. You have what you say. Well, if you keep confessing your problem, if you keep confessing the disease that you're dealing with in your body, the affliction, you keep confessing that, you're going to have that. 
But I'm going to confess something different. I'm going to confess by Jesus' stripes, I am healed. I'm going to confess what Jesus already paid for. Truth number six, you have authority in Christ Jesus or in Jesus' name. All power and authority is invested in the name of Jesus. Are you using that name? Are you using the name of Jesus to knock out those things that are trying to take you down? Are, are, you, are, you, are you taking your authority in Jesus? And so, so you have the authority in Christ Jesus. Listen, in James 4, 7, uh, James says this way. When something's coming against you, he says, Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So what do we have to do? We have to submit ourselves under God and his rulership. We submit ourselves by submitting to God's word. If God's word says that we're a conqueror, then we don't say that we're losers. If God says that we're victors in Christ, then we, we agree with that word. We're victors regardless if it looks like we're losing. Amen. Amen. We, we submit to God's authority. We get in. How do you submit to God's authority? You, the way you do that is you get in agreement with God's word. If God's word says it, then you believe it, and that settles it. So you get in agreement. You say, okay, uh, this is truth. I believe the truth of God's word, regardless of what's going on in my life. Amen. Remember what Jesus said to his disciples? He says this. He sent 70 out to cast out demons, to heal the sick. And he said in Luke 10, 19 and 20, he said, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Oh my, he's talking to us. You can say, well, he's just talking to them. No, he's talking to us. Everything that Jesus did in his ministry, he was doing that to show, as, to show us that we could do that too. He was doing, he was casting out devils. He was laying hands on the sick. He was saying that, that, that the same power that he walks in, we can walk in. He actually said this, the works that I do, you can do, and greater works. Why? Because Jesus goes to the Father on our behalf. So we can even do greater works than Jesus. That's amazing to me. And he says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. That's basically saying uh, it's, it's, it's demons, demonic spirits to, to overcome and, uh, uh, and to overcome and the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. I love that. Nothing will harm you. Let me read that again. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. You have the power to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will can hurt you, glory to God. We have the power. We have the authority to knock out whatever is coming against our lives. And then Jesus goes in one better than that. He said, don't get so excited that the devils listen to you uh, in, in my name, but get excited that your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. In other words, we need to get excited every day, oh, that we're saved, that we're delivered, that we're set free, glory to God, that we're on our way to heaven, glory, that we've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness and translated into God's dear kingdom uh, of his dear son's love, glory to God. Uh, set number seven, truth, your faith can make your whole. A lot of times we think, well, we, uh, we need the faith of somebody else. If I could get some famous preacher to, to pray for me, then I can get healed. Or uh, if I can get the pastor. Now, I walk in the anointing, thank God. God has graced me, glory to God. I've seen miracles. I've laid hands on people and seen God do miracles. Hallelujah. And, uh, and, and you're going to be doing that too. You're probably already, glory to God. Uh, but, but, but I'm going to say this to you today. I'm making a, a declaration that your faith, not my faith, your faith can make you whole. Your faith. Your faith. It says here, when Jesus departed, Matthew 9, 27, uh, 9, verse 27 through 29, when Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And uh, they must have took the cue from blind Bartimaeus. And when he had come into the house... 
the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? And they said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be done unto you. Jesus did not say, According to my power, let it be done unto you. According to my anointing, let it be done unto you. Jesus said, According to your faith. So your faith has everything to do with your healing. That's why the enemy's working against our faith. That's why the enemy's trying to get us to side with our sickness. That's why the enemy's trying to get us to buddy up with that and to keep saying, we got this. No, no, you got the stripes of Jesus working on your behalf. In, Ma in Matthew 9, 22, Jesus turned around and saw her and said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was well from that hour. And this account right here was that uh, the lady with the issue of blood that was dealing with it for 12 years and she touched the hem of his garment and Jesus said, your faith has made you well. So what am I saying? Your faith can heal you, glory to God. Uh, uh, in Matthew 15, 8, uh, Jesus said, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. So, so this was the lady that had a de de demonic daughter that came to Jesus and, 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 was, and she was a Seraphonician lady. She was outside the, the covenant of Israel and Jesus said, you know, it's not good for me to cast the bread of healing to the dogs. Do you remember that? And there was some, there was some opposition in a sense. And she, she came trying to get the healing for her daughter. Then she finally bowed her knee to Jesus and said, Lord. That's what Jesus was waiting for. He was waiting for her to bow her knee and say, Lord, even, even the dogs eat from the crumbs of the master's table. And that's when Jesus said, great is thy faith. Great is thy faith. You have what you desire. Your faith can bring your desires into reality. Can I get a witness in the house today? Truth number eight, you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Not that you're going to get healed. You are already positionally healed by the stripes of Jesus. And it says in Isaiah 53, 5, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. And in 1 Peter 2:24. Jesus is looking back at the cross and Jesus said, and Peter says this in his epistle, in his letter to us, he said, by Jesus' stripes, you were healed. Amen. You were healed. Right. So if you were, you are. In other words, the truth is that Jesus' stripes already paid the price. So we guys, we got to start thanking God that we're, we're healed and, 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 and we will receive it, glory to God. Truth number nine, believing you are healed before you see it brings healing into your life. Believing you are healed before you, it's kind of piggybacking off of, of, of eight. In Mark eleven twenty four, Jesus speaks to the mountain. I didn't complete that, that, uh, that, that scripture, but in, in verse 24, it says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Think about that. Believe that you receive them and that you will have them. Well, you got to put your faith in the now. You can't say, well, I'm going to be healed someday in the sweet by and by. God's going to heal me someday. Some, some way it's gonna, I'm going to get my healing. No, you get your healing today. Faith is now faith. Now faith is the substance of things for, hope for, the evidence of things not seen. Your faith has to be set in the now. Amen. And you got to believe that you're healed now, glory to God. Not next week that your healing is manifesting now, but I'm still dealing with it. Yeah, but that doesn't, that doesn't change the fact that Jesus already paid for it. And it doesn't change the fact that, that you, you're going by what you believe, not by what you feel. I'm preaching today. You're going by what you believe and not by what you feel. I was dealing with a cough a couple weeks back. I don't know if you remember about that. And I just kept confessing, by Jesus stripes, I'm healed. Have you, have you heard me cough lately? No. I'm healed. 
And I confessed it, and that cough had to go. That cough had to bow its knee to the words of my, of my positive words, of the scriptures of God's word. And, and I'm going to say this to you. As you continue to confess the word of God, uh, every symptom, every, every disease has to bow to the name of Jesus. Number 10, God's word will transform your mind from thinking natural to thinking like Christ. The problem is, is a lot of times we're thinking way too natural. We're thinking, we're, we're, we're thinking on the natural plane of life and, and we're, 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 we're trying to logically figure things out. And faith is not reason. And reason is not faith. See, Thomas, when Thomas, he, he, he wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came through and spoke to them. Thomas was, the, was out that day. And Thomas, had, he had what I call a seeing faith. He said, unless I see Jesus, unless I can put my finger in the holes of his hand and thrust my hand in his side, I will not believe. He had a seeing faith. But I'm going to say this to you this morning. You've got to move from having a seeing faith. Well, once the symptom's gone, then I believe I'm healed. No, you've got to believe you're healed before the symptom's gone. Yeah. Oh, you hear what I'm saying to you today? You've got to believe you're prosperous even if you're broke and in debt. Yeah, amen. I'm preaching today. You've got to start believing some things. Amen. So you've got to have a believing faith and not just a seeing faith. And remember what Jesus said when he came through that, that room again? Jesus said, Thomas, come over here. Come over here. He got, that, he got coin doubting Thomas. Amen. But he died for his faith. I mean, he went from doubting Thomas to believing Thomas. And, but he saw Lord Jesus. But Jesus said, blessed are those. He said, blessed are you that see me. But he said, more blessed are those that don't see me and walk in my ways. Amen. I'm going to say this. If you never had a vision of Jesus, if you've never seen Jesus, Jesus never appeared to you, you're more blessed. Why? Because you're not going with a sight faith. You're going with a believing faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And so, so in Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove was that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What, what, what the church really need, it, they really, what we really need is transformed minds and transfigured bodies. That's what the church needs. Transform minds. We need our minds transformed or renewed to the things of God. And when we renew our minds and we understand how to start speaking right, then we're going to see the promises and the blessings of God in our lives. You believe that today? I'm telling you, I'm talking to a faith crowd today. Oh, my Lord Jesus, I'm telling you, disease is leaving you. I'm telling you, high blood pressure is leaving you. I'm telling you, heart problems are leaving you, glory to God. Uh, whatever the enemy is trying to put on you, it's leaving you in Jesus. I'm decreeing it. I'm stating a fact. Glory to God. Because God's power is greater than the devil's power. The devil is just a created being. God is omnipotent. That means he's all powerful. Do you believe that today? Did you receive it this morning? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, I just thank you for your mercies and your goodness and your love. I thank you, Father God, that we're learning, Father God, to speak right and to act right and to speak to those mountains in our lives. And Father, I thank you for these, these wonderful people this morning. I thank you for those that are watching or listening to me. And, and perhaps... You've never made Jesus king of your life. You've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Well, the Bible says that you can confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead. You shall be saved. Your own words will justify you in the presence of the holy God. So I want to encourage you to, to speak this if you're ready to receive Christ today and say this out loud. Say, dear God, I believe Jesus you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you were raised from the dead for my justification. Today, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. And Heavenly Father, 
fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.